Okay, you've joined me back and we're on number four now. We're almost done. So I'm just trying to keep my energy going because I don't have a coffee today. Right, number four. What is number four? You may ask, and I am asking, that's why I've got notes. Okay, so number four, junctions turning right. Now, funnily enough, the next junction I'm turning left. So that doesn't really work. And then the junction after that, I'm turning left. And then the junction after that, I'm turning left. So you know what? We talked about the left only arrows here. There it is again. So on the last video, which was number five, I did yammer on about the left only arrows, which is actually going back to response to signs road markings, which was number nine. And if you have been following this series, thank you very much. We're on to number four, junctions turning right. So what I'm gonna do, and here's the traffic lights, which we talked about, okay? So even though I've been talking, I've been focusing on that because there's two separate traffic lights, one on the right for turning right, and one on the left, which came up with the green arrow, while the one on the right stayed as a red light. And that green arrow was the filter light, which we referred to on the previous videos. So if you haven't seen those, go back to number one video and just watch the whole series because we're going to cover pretty much everything you need to know. And this route is very important to know as well. Okay, so even though that red light stayed on, I saw the green arrow and I went. Now I'm going to take the next road on the left here. Sometimes the examiners might ask you to take this turn. I'm going to let the bicycle go first, check my mirror again. That might come up on the list. And then turn left. Now this way I'm going to be able to kind of cover a junction turning right. Now the reason why the examiners would take you down this road is to do your manoeuvre, which you did right at the beginning, that was number 10, reverse parking and the reason why people would fail for that one, so the 10th most likely reason for people failing was control, okay, usually that is for not filling, finishing the manoeuvre in, within the requirements. Okay, I've got priority, so I'm gonna go ahead. They can turn right behind me. Okay, so that's the main road turning into a side road turning right, the oncoming vehicle. If that vehicle just turned in front of me suddenly, if we did that, we would cause the oncoming vehicle, which would have been me, to slow, stop or swerve. That's a serious fault, as we don't have priority. The oncoming traffic has priority before we turn right. This is approaching to turn right. What's the difference? One, you don't have the give way line, so that's when you're on the main road turning into a side road. And then this one, sorry, that's approaching to turn right. This one's emerging. So now I'm emerging, I have the give way lines and I need to make sure it's safe before I emerge. So if it's a closed junction, which I mentioned at the beginning, peep and creep. Now again, if it's not safe to walk out, do not drive out, otherwise creep out, keep looking, creep out, keep looking, creep out. I can see enough now to make a good decision whether I'd walk out, there's a van coming, so I'm gonna stop, he's turning, I'm gonna look again, and now I'm going to turn. So you can see, even though I creeped out quite a lot, the, the visibility was still quite hard to see. I did manage to see that van. And if you show the examiner that you're doing this and you are a safe driver and a responsible driver, they're definitely going to pass you, providing nothing else happens, obviously. But if you just rush out at junctions without making effective observations and act on the information that you can see, the examiner's going to think you're reckless, dangerous. And would you give yourself a driving license if you were driving that way? Honestly, you're probably not going to. All right, following the signs of central London, this is another independent drive. So we followed the signs earlier to Rainer's Lane. Uh, that's one, you might be asked to do that. This is a separate one, following the signs to central London. I'm turning left at this roundabout. We're gonna be coming on to part three now, guys, giving it some beans and off I go. Wow, that van just almost pulled out in front of the other car. All right, so joining the dual carriageway now. We're gonna be linking into number three, so why don't you go and join number three and you're gonna see me join a dual carriageway.